Praise God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 11, Paul said, when I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I taught as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. I want you to count how many eyes are there. Number one, when I was a child, one, I speak as a child, two, I understood as a child, three, I taught as a child, four, but when I became a child, five, I put away childish things. What's the most prevalent, prevalent word there? I. When I was a child, how did I become a child? I was born a child. Nobody came into this world a man. And by that man, I mean a grown adult. I don't mean the sex as a male or female. Everybody was born a baby. You're born a child. And when you are at that stage of life, he said, you, the speaking of a child is, you know, you can't form your thoughts. You speak as a child. How do children speak? Children really don't know the depths of the meaning of the things they say, but because they have heard other people say it, particularly the people around them, they say those things too. So children imitate the sounds, the vocal symbols of adults. I'm talking about the transition from perceiving like a child because it is the perception of childishness that causes us to think, talk, and act like a child. And it is the I that is the common denominator in all the circumstances. You are the one in every situation. Whether it's in marriage, you are the one in marriage. Whether it's in business, you are the one in business. In church, you are the one in, in church. The I is constant. And in spiritual things, there is maturity to do. You are born a babe. The Bible says as newborn babes. But don't stay there. You have to desire the sincere milk of the word of God that you may grow thereby. So you have to graduate. How did Paul describe the, the babes in Christ in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 from verse 1? He said, when I came to you, brethren, I could not speak unto you as unto spiritual. In other words, I could not talk to you as mature people. I speak to you as unto carnal, even as babes in Christ. Children are carnal. What does that mean, carnal? Sense ruled. They speak what they feel. As a matter of fact, if you tell the child in Christ not to say what he feels, he will argue that you are being unrealistic. He will say things like, so you mean I should not acknowledge, I should not, is it not true that I am? I had a conversation with my little girl yesterday. After the meeting as we were going, a conversation about salvation. Because when they asked to pray for people who want to be saved, my daughter was here. When they asked of people who want to be, she was here. And I realized I have a job to do. Why? They don't feel saved. When you are a child, it's what you feel that is real to you. That's why he called them sense rule, canal. So Paul said, I was there. 
I was a child once. We all were born children. And when I was a child, Paul said, I taught. When I processed information, when I processed the situation, I always saw myself being victimized. And when I uttered, when I spoke, I spoke what I felt. They don't like me in this church. My husband's family hates me. That can be a fact. But doesn't have to be your reality. Whatever happens on the external, when it comes to you, you give it your interpretation based on the word of God. Are you hearing? In Matthew chapter 22, the last verse, somewhere around the 34 down, the Pharisees came to Jesus and they asked him one question. They said, Master, which commandment is the greatest? The Bible said they came to tempt him. Which commandment is the greatest? He said, well, this is the greatest commandment. That you will love the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your soul. Then he said, the second commandment is like the first. And the second commandment is that you will love your neighbor as you love yourself. That you love your neighbor as you love yourself. I want an illustration. Three people should come here. I want to make an illustration with you so you know it's you. Good. Three people. So one here. Come one, one somebody should. One person should be here. Good. Move a bit. So you have the three of them. Praise the Lord. Man is a spirit. He has a soul. He lives in the body. So come a bit. This is one man. But the man is a spirit. When I was a child, is this. Are you hearing me? Man is a spirit. He has a soul. In his soul, his, his emotion, his will, and his intellect. Man is not his soul. Every living soul, praise the Lord. What does that mean? When God created man, Adam, in Genesis chapter 1, he interacted with what he created. He said, be fruitful and multiply. Then there, he had not, there was, this part did not exist. Are you following? Then he went to the dust of the ground and he formed this. Then he came to this and he breathed into him the breath of life and this showed up. He became a living soul. Are you here? But in Genesis chapter 1, he was talking, this one, this one is complete. Nothing was missing. You know, God is not a soul. And if he made man in his image and likeness, he didn't make a soul. Are you following? God is spirit. He made man in his image and to function like him, that's likeness. And spirits function by faith. Faith is not a technology. It's the breath. It's the living aspect of being a spirit. It's not a formula. For children, eating is not a formula. Are you following? So man is a spirit. When God breathed into him, he became conscious in this realm. The soul emerged. Now this soul is his self. Say self because I want to talk to you about self-love. Self. This is the self, self-love. This is not the man. 
This is you. This is yourself. So there is a relationship between you and yourself. Most important relationship. You. When I was a child, when I was a child was when spiritually I perceived from the outside God did not become, when I became, that's why I said you should look at the I, 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 I. I became, how did you become? I shifted perspective. I saw from the inside, not from the outside. The heir, as long as he's a child, deferred nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all, and is kept under tutors and governors. Until the time appointed of the father. That time appointed of the father is not a date on the calendar. It's a time of maturity. It's the day your perspective shifts. That's the time appointed of the Father. So, this man goes to the word. The word of God says, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth that Jesus is Lord, believing in your heart that God has risen from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That's what the word says. And so, he believes Jesus as Lord of his life. And he confesses it. He is saved. He's saved. So tomorrow, the preacher calls for those who need to be saved. Because he loves God. His experience here doesn't feel like saved. Why? Why? Children judge by their senses. So he is aware there are certain things he does not do right. He is aware. As a matter of fact, he heard somebody talk about the love of God and he's sure he doesn't have that kind. And he needs that kind. So what does he believe now? He believes he has to start all over. Some of us have given our life to Christ many. How many times did you come out of your mother's womb? Why are you coming out again, again? Because he is a babe. Though his spirit, he still judges by the dictates of his senses. Are you following? So they came to Jesus and asked him, Master, what is the greatest commandment? He said that you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with your mind and your soul. And the second is like the first, that you love yourself, like that you love your neighbor as yourself. What do you think? Your focus is to love your neighbor. Loving is giving, the same thing. Okay, for example, everything you have, you must receive first from God, right? Do you understand? You can... Not give what you don't have. And you will not give what you don't know you have. i put it again so you can get it. You cannot give what you don't have. But you will not give what you don't know that you have. So, if you think you don't have, but you have, will you give? You will not give because you don't know what you have. So, this is the way you think of giving and loving. Because I said giving is loving and loving is giving. The same thing. Whatever principle applies to giving applies to loving. So, this is what we think of giving. We think of it as charity. That means, remember this is one person. So when you say, love your neighbor as yourself, this man thinks to love your neighbor is to bypass yourself and to love another. That's charity thinking. So this person has a desire to love but lacks the understanding of the flow of love because 
He only loved God first because he realized God's love. That's why in that commandment, he puts loving God first. You see, to receive, to be able to continually give, you must increase your capacity to receive. Are you following? This is not where you receive. This is where you receive love. Do you love yourself? Means, have you received the love of God? Did you hear me? Did you hear what I said? You don't realize the love you have, and so you don't share it with yourself. Do you get it? So Jesus said, you can love your neighbor only to the extent that you have received love. Because the church teaches more about giving, giving, not balancing it with receiving. Are you following? To receive is to enlarge your capacity to give. Are you, did you hear what I just said? It's very big what I just said. Your capacity to give is in receiving. Meaning, the more he loves himself, the more he'll be able to love another person. Why? Because God is not in this transaction between you and yourself. God is between spirit and spirit. That is your responsibility. So Paul said, when I was a child, I taught as a child. I speak as a child. I understood as a child. But Paul said, but when I became a man, I, not God, I put away childish things. I put away seeing like a child, thinking like a child, and talking like a child. So, self-love is not selfishness. The first person he must love is himself. Because he cannot give what he has not received. And most of you don't love yourself. Why? You don't know yourself. Look at Jesus. If you remove the religious thinking and read Jesus, he's the proudest person there is. Always talking about I came from the Father. I am from above. He are from beneath. I am the bread of life. I, I, is the most I. From a religious perspective, we make him look humble by our definition. He's the most secure. The guy who never, he said, your testimony, he said, look, they say, why do you testify of yourself? He said, I testify of myself, but my testimony is true. So you go into marriage looking for love. Wrong reason to be married. Do you love you? Do you like you? Because this is the you now. When you look at yourself, you look at him emotionally, you say, you are an emotional wreck. Everything hurts you. That's the way you judge yourself. Are you following? You look at your intellect, say, look, John is more intelligent. You are not more intelligent. You see the relationship he is having with himself? You see that relationship you're having with yourself? Talking yourself down. Beating yourself down. Wishing you were someone else. This is the relationship you have with yourself. Then you come to your body, you pretend, and you decorate it. You wear a weave on. <laughs> you bait it. This is a mask. Little thing. <laughs> Why? This relationship is failing. And Jesus said, love others only as you have. Because you cannot love others more than you have loved yourself. 
Every day you are looking for somewhere to go to because you don't like to be with your... Because anytime you are with yourself, that conversation starts. You see you, you are not married. You have bad relationship with yourself and you are looking for good relationship outside. You can't give what you don't have. And what you need to know is what you have. Look, look at you. What did God put here? When God is talking, he's not interested in self. He's saying, you are my king. You will lend and not borrow. You are above always not be net. He's, talking, he's not interested in yourself. This conversation, you must talk to you. Talk to yourself and say, self? <laughs> You have to be your own best friend. When you love yourself, you can come out with just slippers. <laughs> That's the king. That's the king. Because many people don't love themselves. They call us braggarts. Because we live on a different wavelength. I was saved once. It finished the matter. So yesterday when we had a meeting here, I sat there and unconsciously I just crossed my leg. That's the way I am. And I said, I don't know what this madam would think. Let me help him. Put my leg down. Because it means nothing to me. Do you understand? That's me. Someone else will say it's posy. No, no, no. Why do I love myself? I'll tell you. Because when God showed me me, I valued myself. I saw the best. When you break gold into two, it's two parts of gold. He said I'm made in his image. I'm him. Every part of God is God. My nose is supposed to be like this. My voice is supposed to be like this. The part of me you don't like, this rude, rough guy, is me! I love me! I don't fit into their box of what a pastor should be. I refuse. Jesus, I told somebody the other day, I said, in a few years I'll be 50, I, I, I want to reinvent myself. <laughs> My God. Because I can. You are not held bound by anybody. The real culprit is you. You say I'm unstable. Let me tell you what stability is. Stability is you never following this guy. Leading him. Because you see yourself. It's crazy. When he doesn't feel good, he say we are no good. You say, sure. You say, we're tired. You say, no prayer now. I don't care what you feel. Let's pray. Why? Love is commitment to the best in you and others. When you are committed to the best in you, you will always hold yourself to the highest of standards. You will always hold yourself to the best of standards. You will reject mediocrity friendship, mediocrity talk. Then all others who don't love themselves, they are more in number. They will say, you are high, you lifted up. But there is no one like me. No one like you, not another. Thank you. Go to your seat. Why is this important? I said, self love is not selfishness. Self love is your first love. And when you miss your first love, everybody will treat. Look, let me tell you something. 
you look at giving like charity, that's why there's a problem. So you feel like you are just someone to pass something to someone else. No, God wants you to experience what you are passing on. Did you hear what I just said? Yes, sir. He gave you love so you can experience it and share it. But you think you're a medium to pass it. Because you have no capacity in yourself to receive his love. How do you increase your capacity to give? Is to increase your capacity to receive. That's how you increase your capacity to give. It's not to increase your desire to give. It's to increase your capacity to receive. Many of you have large capacity to give. La sorry, large desire to give. With small capacity to receive. You cannot give beyond your capacity no matter your desire. You cannot love also beyond your capacity no matter your desire. So I look at your heart. You have great desire. It means nada. God can trust you with nations. One guy insisted on his friendship based on deposit that is time for withdrawal. So it's my birthday, you bring money. Yes. And in split, in a day or two days, raised about 200 million. If you think it's celebrity status, let other celebrities try it. His capacity that has been built, that he placed a demand on. And I hear he's turning it over to charity. Do you love you? You're asking me to love what you rejected. Why do you think that I'm trash can. Why do you want to dump on me something you rejected? Why is your love defined by how much I tolerate your stupidity? If you held yourself to high standard, I wouldn't have to. Man is a spirit. He's not his soul. So when I hear the word of God, he says, I, I'm, I, I chase after the word of God like one who has found great spoil. When I hear the word of God, he said, if I confess I'm saved, it has ended. Nothing is leaking in me. It settled the first time I heard it. It has ended. Why? My capacity to receive is large. So he says it once. David said, once the Lord had spoken, I heard it resoundingly. It echoed. So I'm not asking him again, what did you say? He said it. When I look at my credentials, I realize I couldn't work for anybody. I just hired myself. You can't be this smart and trade it for pennies. No, you can't. I'm too good. The only person who deserves my best. Let me tell you something. I love myself more than my wife. I love myself more than you, Shanti. I love myself more than any of you. It is supposed to be so. Why? That's why Loving you is not diminishing me. It's the overflow because my cup run it over. With no strings attached. The day you come, I love you. The day you're gone, I miss you, but I love me before you came. <laughs> my God. The world is having problems with guys like us. They're having problems with guys like us. And we are surprised at them. They know not. Neither do they understand. They walk on in darkness. The whole foundation of this earth they had, of course, he says. So what I have said, 
Not yourself. Ye, ye are God. Not yourself. Ye are God. Ye. So it's you. The Lord has said so that I may boldly say to myself, we are God's. Children are sense rude. Every circumstance you face, every disappointment you have faced, don't waste it. There's an experience out of it that should make you better. I can't have a, a better last year. Let me tell you why I can't have a better last year. Is the person getting into the year is better than the previous person. And often, who you are attracts the things that come to you. Who you are attracts the things that come to you. Who you are. From the beginning of life, you and all the things you need, they are spread apart. But everyone meets at God. And as you are going, they are coming. In your knowledge of God, not in your sleeping in church. As you're going, they are coming. As you're going, they are coming. <laughs> Sometimes I meet people and I wonder if they really understood who came. Because you can put us in any, any uh, box. It can be your friend. It can be your pastor. It can be your... But what you need to realize is your help has come. To clean the mindset. Your help. Because the real issue is once your mind change about it. To conform with the mind of Christ. What do you have? The mind of Christ is an elevated mindset. The one that sees like Christ sees. <laughs> self-love is not selfishness. Instead, self-love is first love. First person you love. You love him because God accepted him. When I was young, they had names for me. I had this big nose. They called me Dr. Kumwe. <laughs> In the old I had the best nose. They didn't know. So I had it so much, I began to pull my nose because it's going down. I began to pull my nose until this thing kicked in. This self-love. When it kicked in, I realized that. I want to ask you a question. Your description of beauty, where did you get it from? That's your slavery in not accepting yourself. Let me prove it to you. There are people you have thought were not fine. The more others accepted them as fine, you changed. How did the perception change? It means it could change. Once they started putting all these skinny, hungry looking scarecrow models, when they started putting them like this, you began to tell yourself that maybe I'm the one that does not understand. Before you know, you began to be anorexic, not eating. Wanting, so my collarbone has to come out. Shame on you. Say, look, the way you are is good. Just be healthy that way. The way you are. I have a problem with men who love their wife sometime and not sometime because they are looking at the wrong thing. You can like her sometimes, don't like, sometimes I don't like my wife. You know, marriage can be boring. Sometimes I want my wife to just go to workplace. Because my first love is me. And sometimes she tells me that. I've told you in this church. She says, ah, look, I need to go to work. When I get to work, she says, that's the way my room is, only me. Have you heard her talk about it? I'm so happy I have somebody who can love themselves the way I love myself. Otherwise, they will feel like I am selfish. But loving, I love my wife all the time. Learn how to hit on your wife when you don't feel like. 
You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a big one. Let me tell you what I mean. Let me no, this is how you know you are mature. It's a sign of maturity. And it's spiritual, let me tell you. Let me tell you. No, 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 let me show you. And I'm not joking, it's spiritual. We don't wait for our feelings. Likewise, you, beloved, building up yourself, praying. When you start both sober higher, that time yourself has not started. You're still looking, you're still looking at time. Somewhere the thing takes over. What catches up is your feeling. The you goes, your feeling catches up. So take it to your wife. You don't feel like, you don't have to. Hit on her. Learn. Mm, women like this. <laughs> let me tell you, oh God. Okay, let me switch it to the women. Learn to love upon your husband when you don't feel like. No. You say they are pregnancy or forget about this pregnancy or moon. I can't say something because I'm preaching. Otherwise, you would have had your ears full. See, look. Okay, maybe you get it if I say it this way. Nothing irritates me. You got it, right? Nothing. Hmm. God bless you. Stand up to your feet. <laughs>